All right, finally, case number 10. It's a 70-year-old male with a leg mass. Let's see where we are. Oh, here's skin. I'll turn it around. So we've got a tumor that's going all the way up into the dermis and also is infiltrating way down into the subcutis, kind of multi multi-lobulated. You can see there's multiple lobules here. And even from low power, you can tell there's a, a lot of empty space in there or pale space. And this slide's a bit older, so it may just be a touch washed out. But this is actually a blue myxoid material or in uh, dermatopathology for the derm train folks often will call this mucin. The path train people will often call this myxoid. It's the same thing. It's ground substance, hyaluronic acid, whatever you like, okay? So there's a bluish material here, and uh, again, I find that mucin and mixoid stuff tends to fade uh, first on an H&E slide. It doesn't take long. Some slides like this one that are only a few years old begin to already have fading of that kind of mixoid background. So there's mixoid material dividing the tumor cells. There's multilobulation, and there's a lot of heterogeneity. We have hypocellular areas here with low cellularity cells scattered in this mucinous background, mixoid background. And then zones here that are really cellular and like a solid sheet. Now let's go down and look at them cytologically. Oh yeah, before we do that though, notice what else is here. Look at these parallel lines running through here. These are all blood vessels. These long vessels that kind of run along and as they run, they gently curve and undulate. See how they're kind of curving back and forth as they go. So we call these curvy linear vessels. And I've mentioned before in other videos, but the vascular patterns of soft tissue tumors, I find to be relatively subtle. And it was one of the last things for me to really, I think, grasp as I, as I finished up my fellowship. Even as I entered practice, I still was learning the nuances of recognizing vascular patterns. So if you have trouble recognizing all these curvy linear and hairpin and chicken wire and all the different vascular patterns, staghorn, all the stuff people talk about, don't feel bad. I, I feel like that some of that stuff is quite subtle and it took me a while to pick up on it. Um, so so don't you're not alone if you struggle with that. But over time, those vascular patterns, if you can pick up on them, do become quite helpful. Look what we can see here. We've got tumor cell necrosis already where this, the cells are turning all pink and the nuclei are dying. And it doesn't, even from low power, you can tell these are ugly cells, very hyperchromatic, pleomorphic, big, huge nucleoli, all the nasty stuff, big, ugly, pleomorphic spindle cells in a mixoid background with long, elongated, kind of dilated, curvy, linear vessels. And it's arising in the, the dermis and subcutis on the extremity of an elderly patient. So all of those are buzzwords when put together that make a diagnosis of mixofibrosarcoma. So this is mixofibrosarcoma. And based on the presence of these sheet-like areas that basically look identical to what you'd see in an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, UPS, when you have sheet-like areas that look like that, and then other areas that are more loose and hypocellular and mixoid, then I'll call that mixofibrosarcoma high grade or grade three, okay? And then the low grade ones should just be scattered atypia in a mixoid background without much significant cellularity. And in between, you can call it grade two, although I find that most of the time I do that when it's a partial sample or a biopsy, I'll say mixofibrosarcoma at least grade two on this sample. And I feel that a lot of times once those come out, they often end up turning out to be grade three in some area. These tumors tend to be heterogeneous. They can have areas that are very hypocellular and others that are very cellular. So when it's a large mass and you're getting a needle biopsy and it's mixoid and a little atypical, you, I, I will often even mention that in my comment that mixoid tumors tend to be heterogeneous and therefore sampling variation on a small biopsy can be a much bigger concern with mixoid air, um, tumors in particular. Sometimes correlating with the scan can be helpful because radiographically on CT and MRI, um, uh, the musculoskeletal radiologist is often able to say, oh, there's areas here that are cellular, there's areas that have more of a mixoid quality that look kind of mixoma-like, but other areas that look you know, higher grade and cellular, and there's some necrosis and hemorrhage. So they'll often even be able to tell you, oh, this is a very heterogeneous tumor. But the problem that I encounter is that a lot of times these tumors are on the smaller side, and because uh, mix of fibrosarcomas, about half of them occur above the fascia, like this one's do. It's occurring in the subcutis and even into the dermis. So they, they often get misdiagnosed clinically as a cyst or a lipoma, as so many different um, superficial sarcomas and other tumors often are, are thought to be cyst or, or um, lipoma because they're just a flesh-colored bump, and those cysts and lipomas are super common, and these things are rare. 
But as sarcoma, you know, all sarcomas are rare, but as sarcomas go, mix of fibrous sarcoma is actually relatively common. I, I probably see a couple, two or three cases maybe a month in, in my practice. And in the past, when I used to take consults, I saw them even more often than that. So as opposed to some other tumors, like say the similarly named but unrelated tumor, low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, also known as Evans tumor, I see that maybe one or two times per year. So there are some sarcomas that are, you know, all of them are rare compared to common types of, of cancer, like colon cancer or breast cancer. But uh, among sarcomas, some are rare and some are ultra rare, and then everything in between. So this, again, is important to keep in mind because you might get a shave biopsy off of one of these. You might get, I've gotten multiple of these where they're shelled out in a chunk and they thought it was just a cyst and their pre-op diagnosis was cyst and the post-op diagnosis was uh, not a cyst. And then all I get is big chunks and fragments of tumor that looks like this. So um, I've seen all different uh, variations on that theme. And I do feel though that these have a higher tendency to get misdiagnosed as something else and then to get sampled kind of partially or you know, not receive a, a definitive cancer type surgery up front because they don't look like they're gonna be a sarcoma clinically. As I like to bring up to my dermatology residents, this is an important sarcoma to know about because among sarcomas, it's relatively common and it often occurs in or right under the skin, okay? So um, uh, these tumors, this one is a relatively small one, but they oftentimes infiltrate along the subcutaneous septa and also along the fascia. And because of that, they can really extend far beyond what appears to be the clinical boundary of the tumor. So they'll do a wide local excision and oftentimes the margins are still positive way out beyond where the tumor looked like it was limited to, uh, to the naked eye and to palpation. So that's a really important thing um, and uh, to make sure that, that your uh, cancer surgeon is aware of if they're doing a resection and sarcoma surgeons are very familiar with these. And, the, and I, I feel like the sarcoma surgeons and orthopedic oncologists I've worked with are often frustrated by these tumors because they'll go do a wide margin and still end up dealing with positive margins, even though they thought they were well around it. So it's a, it's a very vexing, frustrating problem for the treating physicians and for the poor patients who have to endure these tumors. So uh, these, when they're high grade, they do have potential to behave in an aggressive fashion and not only recur locally, but metastasize. When they're purely grade one and superficially located above the fascia, um, at least in some studies, they have essentially no risk of metastasis at that point. But if they recur, they do have a tendency to kind of increase in grade and progress into a higher grade as they recur. And then of course they develop the potential to metastasize. And if you have trouble remembering how to tell apart mixofibrosarcoma from low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma because the names are maddeningly similar in the sound. I do have a video that's like five minutes long and will help make it really clear to you that these are very easy to tell apart. They are not lookalikes, they are name-alikes. They sound similar, but almost never do they look like each other with the very rare exception. Okay, and I do have a full-length video about both low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma and this entity we're looking at here, mixofibrosarcoma, and I'll put those links below as well. Now, um, one last thing I'll point out is that uh, mixofibrosarcoma and some other myxoid tumors, like mixoinflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma, another tumor that's frustratingly similar in name and can actually look quite similar to mixofibrosarcoma. I have a video and, uh, and a whole slide image example of that I'll link below as well. But the point is, is that mixofibrosarc and mixoinflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma, both of them have a tendency to suck up the mucin or the myxoid material from the background and make these blue kind of loose vacuoles in their cytoplasm. And those are called pseudo lipoblasts. Do not confuse these with true lipoblasts, which would, if this tumor uh, had a true lipoblast, I would call this a, not a myxoid liposarc, but I'd call it a pleomorphic liposarcoma with myxoid change. And I, I have a whole video about liposarcomas, liposarcoma 101, I'll put a link below. You can check it out. All right, so anyway, mixofibrosarcomas often have pseudo lipoblasts which are bubbly mucin-filled or mixoid-filled tumor cells. All right, we've really hit on all of those points. And again, you can go watch the longer video if you need some more information. There's some ugly pleomorphism there, but this is mixofibrosarcoma. Be on the lookout because you will probably encounter this tumor at some point during your career, maybe even multiple times. And again, I'll put the links uh, online once I get them scanned. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day.